A triangle has two sides of length 8 with an included angle of 45 degrees. And we want, want to find the length of the third side and the area of the triangle. So let me try drawing that. There's 8, there's 16. That's about a 45 degree angle, but it's not really intended to be drawn to scale. And notice here that we're given a side angle side presentation of the triangle. Side angle side, and the angle's less than 180 degrees. So we know that there is a unique triangle satisfying this data. And so we want to find the length of the third side. Now this is tailor-made for the law of cosines. Let me write down the law of cosines to get started. The law of cosines says c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cosine of capital C. So let me call the missing side little c, which means its opposite angle is capital C, and a and b will be the sides that we know. Now we can put all that information into the law of cosines, and we can solve for the missing side little c. So I'll plug that in. c squared is equal to 8 squared is 64. 16 squared is 256, minus 2 times 8 times 16, cosine of capital C. 64 plus 256 is 320, minus uh, 2 times 8 times 16 is 256. Now, capital C is the given angle. That was given as a 45 degree angle, and I know what the cosine of 45 degrees is. That's one of the common values that we learned earlier on in the trigonometry lectures. The cosine of that, it's the same as pi over 4, so the cosine of that is square root of 2 over 2. So this simplifies down to 320 minus 128 square roots of 2. And so C is equal to the square root of 320 minus 128 square roots of 2. And that's probably something worth checking out on a calculator. So I'll work out the square root of 320 minus 128 square roots of 2. And it tells me that it is approximately 11.8. So now we have that third side is approximately 11.8 units long. So that's the first problem of the trying of the uh, example here. Um, now we're asked to find the area of the triangle. So I want to do a little more trigonometry to find that area. I'm going to drop an altitude from this top angle here. And I want to try to find the length of that altitude. The reason I'm trying to find that is I remember the area formula. Area is equal to 1 half base times height, and I know the base is 16. Oh, it's even labeled with side length b, the way I have it labeled on my triangle. The height is the length of that altitude, so I've got to solve for that length right there. Uh, I'm going to use SOHCAHTOA here because I have the hypotenuse of the triangle, and I have the uh, angle here. So I know that by SOHCAHTOA, Sine theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. So sine of 45 is equal to the opposite. I don't know that. I'll write it as opposite so it doesn't look like the number 0. Over the hypotenuse is 8. And so the opposite is equal to 8 sine 45, which is equal to 8. Again, the sine of 45, that's something I know because it's a common value. It's pi over 4. So that's square root of 2 over 2. So that's 4 square roots of 2 is equal to the length of that opposite there. So that's 4 square roots of 2. And so my area, which is 1 half base times height, which is 1 half times 16, times 4 square roots of 2 is what I figured out the height was. And so that's 8 times 4, so that's 32 square roots of 2 is my area. And if you want that to be a decimal, 
we can approximate that on the calculator as about 45.3. So that gives us the area of the triangle based on the 1 half base times height calculation. So we're really done with this one, but I'd like to check it using another formula that we've learned in trigonometry, which is Heron's formula. So let me remind you what Heron's formula is. Heron's formula says that the area of a triangle, if you know all three sides, which we did figure out, is the square root of s times s minus a times s minus b times s minus c. So that was Heron's formula. a, b, and c are the lengths of the sides of the triangle, but this s, this mysterious quantity s, is the semi-perimeter. That means one half of the perimeter which is the sum of the sides. So let's work that out first. Um, we know that two of the sides were 8 and 16. And we worked out on the previous slide that the third side is approximately equal to 11.8. So we put that together. We get uh, 8 plus 16 is 24, plus 11.8 is 35.8. And half of that is 17.9. So that's the semi-perimeter. Let me drop that into Heron's formula now. The area is equal to 17.9 times 17.9 minus a, which was 8. 17.9 minus b, which is 16. And 17.9 minus c, which we figured out on the previous slide was 11.8. So now it's just a matter of simplifying that. That's 17.9. 17.9 minus 8 is 9.9. 17.9 minus 16 is 1.9. And 17.9 minus 11.8 is 6.1. So I'm going to multiply those together on my calculator. And I get 2053.9. Take the square root of that, and I get approximately... 45.3, which is what we figured out on the previous slide. So that's a very useful check that we were doing everything right on the previous slide. So let's recap what we did there. We were given a triangle with two sides and an included angle. So 816 and the included angle was 45. We used the law of cosines to find the length of the third side of the triangle. The law of cosines is kind of tailor-made. If you have side angle side, you use the law of cosines to find the length of the third side. We then had to find the area of the triangle. I did that the first time by dropping an altitude of the triangle, found the length of the altitude, and then used the old geometry formula, 1 half base times height, to find the area. The other way we could possibly find the area was to use Heron's formula, which is useful when you know all three sides of a triangle. You find the semi-perimeter, which is what we did here. And then you take that and you drop it into Heron's formula for the area. And you drop all three sides in there. And then it's just a matter of working through some arithmetic to find the area. So that's the end of our lecture on the law of cosines and solving triangles and using Heron's formula. These are the trigonometry lectures on educator.com.